Okay, I gotta admit, that was a rather nice touch. Was it the best voiceover dub ever done on NES hardware? No. But as a kid, that always got me pumped up and ready for action every time I wanted to get into this game. Unfortunately, everything else beyond the voice clip goes downhill from there. Ghostbusters for the Nintendo Entertainment System is one of several iterations of a 1984 home computer game designed by David Crane, a name responsible for many retro gaming classics such as Pitfall, Kaboom, and A Boy and His Blob. The computer versions have had its share of fans such as UK publication Retro Gamer Magazine, as well as its share of detractors such as Ernie Hudson's Kids. Given that I've never played the computer versions, I can't really say for sure if they're any good or not, but the NES iteration of Ghostbusters, which was ported over by a Japanese company called Bits, is a downright miserable experience. Contrary to popular belief, you do not actually play as the Ghostbusters themselves. There's no Dr. Peter Venkman or Egon Spengler to be found in the game, but instead you're starting up a brand spanking new Ghostbusters franchise and must purchase the necessary equipment to start busting ghosts across town and make some money, all the while preparing for the inevitable encounter with Gozer and the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. How convenient. So Ghostbusters begins with this bland looking map screen with identical buildings. Basically, you move around your Ghostbusters logo all over the place searching for ghost infestations, acquiring ghost-busting equipment, refueling your Ecto-1, and the like. Whenever you enter a building with the required equipment, of course, the game will switch to this bland, unappealing-looking driving stage where you'll guide your Ecto-1 past other cars. The driving lasts the distance it takes to reach your destination, or once you run out of gas, at which point you're greeted with this lovely scene of your anonymous Ghostbusters pushing the car to the gas station to fuel up while losing some pocket change in the process. Joy! Oh, and by the way, this is what you have to look forward to every time you partake in the driving segments. Avoid traffic, catch fuel barrels to refill, catch ghosts with your ghost vacuum if you have one. Absolutely fun stuff. You could hear the excitement in my voice when I say that. And that's all there is as far as the driving goes. It's... Just a straight road. Nothing special, it gets boring after a while to be honest with you. Once you get the necessary equipment from the shop, you'll need at least a beam and a trap to start busting ghosts. You could start busting ghosts. Drive to the building in distress and start catching ghosts. The ghost busting segments are rudimentary for the most part. You place your trap at any point on the street, and then you catch the ghosts with your proton beams and dab the captive ghosts with your trap. The more ghosts caught in the trap at once, the more money you make. The more money you make, the, the faster it is to buy the better equipment. Once all the ghosts are gone, you go back to the map screen where you have to go back to headquarters to empty your trap. This isn't necessary if you buy the super trap right off the bat. You could just bust ghosts at your leisure, not worry about having to empty the trap. You could just, you know, you know, go from one place to another, bust ghosts, make money, and only take a break every so often to refuel. And that's the majority of Ghostbusters. You drive around, you bust ghosts, you go home, you make money, you so on and so forth, at which point you'll be allowed to enter the Zool building and challenge the Staircase of Doom. <sighs> yeah. Look, I could go into more detail about the limited control, the bland-looking shop, the frustrating stairway level, and its ridiculous mechanic of tap A to walk. And by the way, you might as well bust out a turbo controller such as the NES Max or the NES Advantage for this segment. And no, that's not cheating actually. The game manual itself flat out advises you to use a turbo controller for the staircase. That's a red flag right there, but yeah, I could dwell into that as well as the constant droning of the Ghostbusters theme as composed by a three-year-old, the apparent lack of any sound effects save for a barely a handful, and the really really, really subpar graphics paling in comparison to what you could get out of an original Magnavox Odyssey from the 1970s. But there's really no point. You see, folks, when you get right down to it, Ghostbusters' main problem is that it's boring, tedious, and not entertaining. A stark contrast to the movie this game's supposed to be based on. You start off not knowing what you're supposed to do and end up driving around aimlessly without rhyme or reason. Back when I first got this game ages ago, it took me a long time to figure out how the game works and what I was supposed to do with all the crap I bought from the shop, and I didn't have the benefit of an instruction manual, and that made it even worse. 
But even with that information, the game gives little incentive to put in any real effort to progress forward for lack of a better term. Ghostbusters simply does not engage the player enough by making the gameplay interesting. The driving is monotonous, the ghostbusting segments are sleep inducing, tapping the A button to stiff move about on the stairs is a joke, and the whole thing comes off as a complete waste of time. The frustration that results from the many pitfalls of the piss poor gameplay means that few people will even see the finger killing stairway of death, let alone the final battle with Gozer, which happens to be the only action segment of merit in the entire game. Now, like I said, the NES version is one of several iterations of the original 1984 computer game. I haven't played any of the other versions of Ghostbusters, supposedly the Master System version is a much better version of the game, but after playing this NES game, I have no real desire to check out any of the other versions. This NES Ghostbusters game is just that bad of a game to sour me on any of its brethren, and it's a relief that future Ghostbuster entries didn't attempt to follow up on this style of gameplay, opting for more traditional styles of gameplay such as platformers and the like. I honestly do not see any reason why you should waste a dime or second on this thing. There's nothing substantial or valuable to be found here. Just ignore it and find a better game. Any game, quite frankly, is preferable to this.